That's right. Hey, Joe. I am with Gail from Village Sweet Shop. This is the first time you're on our show. Welcome. It is. Thank you very much for having me. Just go ahead and tell us um, where you're located first off. We are located in the village of Hamburg at 1 Buffalo Street. I'm in an atrium, which is really kind of cool because there's like 10 other stores and we all kind of work together. It's like a little mini mall. Okay, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about Village Sweet Shop. Village Sweet Shop is a unique chocolate store. I do high-end truffles. We were just talking about sea salt um, dark chocolate. is a huge seller of mine. Um, dark chocolate mousse. I take raspberry vinegar and I put it into chocolate. And um, so it's a little different, different, very unique items. So is it mainly chocolate covered things or do you bake as well? I mean, what kind of things can people find there? It's all chocolate or you can find jawbreakers, oh. um, candy, any type of different crazy things. So, so you very unique. Stop it. Very unique. It's artisan. It's really artisan chocolates. I do a lot of hand painting of chocolates. Um, chocolate parties, you can come in and do truffles with me. It's probably um, definitely a bonus for, you know, parties, you know, whether it be kids or adults, you probably can cater to either one. Oh, yeah. I, I always say it's from 2 to 102, I can do anybody. So if you want to come in and do a chocolate party with me or a candy um, Lego castle building party, I would be more than happy to do that. It's a lot of fun. All right. So go ahead and tell us um, what we're going to be making today and what ingredients we need. Well, Pretty much you can dip anything in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate coated with anything is good. Um, you just need a high quality chocolate, of which I have here, and we'll go into what a high quality chocolate is in a few minutes. Um, some toppings, some strawberries. I have some pretzels and some Oreos. All right, well, we'll get into it in just a little bit, but for now, we're going to send it on over to Emily Lenahan with your dot com check. Welcome back. I'm in the kitchen with Gail from the Village Sweet Shop, and we are making some great stuff today. Go ahead and tell us. Um, we have chocolate-covered strawberries, pretzels, Oreos. What's the process? Okay. So what you want to do is you want to start with a high-quality chocolate. So this is Merkin's Gloria. There's probably about, oh, 100 different types of chocolates in the Merkin's line alone. You can cater your chocolate taste to anything that you want. So there's um, what I did basically is I started the chocolate here. This is just basically a double boiler where you have water on the bottom and I melted some chocolate in the top of it. That's all you really need. You can actually put this in the microwave. My microwave actually has a setting that has chocolate on it so that you can melt it. Oh, so don't awesome. be afraid to use it on the microwave, but it's very, very simple. Is it easy to burn? Chocolate's very easy to burn. If you get water into this, it'll seize and you won't be able to use it. Um, so what I did is I boiled the pot and then I shut it off and then okay. I put the chocolate on it. Um, so you have to continually keep on stirring it and stirring it and stirring it. Um, one of the things that we have to do in order to use this chocolate because it has cocoa butter in it and cocoa butter chocolate has to be tempered. That means it has to be raised to 108 degrees, which is what this is, and then it has to be lowered down to about 86 okay. before you can actually use it. And so how can you tell the difference between a high quality chocolate and one that's not so much? Um, primarily, if everybody has these in tops, everybody sees these. These aren't bad to use, um, but this is called confectioner's coating and it has no cocoa butter in it whatsoever. So basically this is chocolate flavored sugar. Okay. And it's pretty and you can use it, but I have a lot of customers that come in and say, oh, I just use the stuff from tops. It's not real chocolate. It's got to have cocoa butter in it. What about like the chocolate chips? Chocolate chips have a little bit of cocoa butter in it, but they're really not high quality chocolate. All right, perfect. Well, for now, we're going to send things on over to Amelia. Amelia, I'm with Gail from the Village Sweet Shop. Hello. Hi. And so we are actually going to start the dipping process. Yes. Let's dip. Yes. Okay. So we started with a high quality chocolate. When I talk about high quality chocolate, it has to have cocoa butter in it, okay? That's got to be one of the first two ingredients. And you said the company you go through actually has over 100 varieties? Oh, there's tons of varieties of chocolate. There's milk, dark, what, you know, anything that you could possibly want. What I did is I put it in a, in a pot of water, I boiled the water first, and then I put the chocolate pot into the top of the water. Then the chocolate melts, but please make sure that you shut off the, the boiling, because if you boil it too much, like we said before, it'll burn. Um, so now we have some really nice, beautiful melted chocolate. And is this milk chocolate that we're using? This is milk chocolate, yeah. Um, this chocolate right here is probably about 108 degrees, and um, we need to temper this down. When we temper chocolate, that means we just need to lower the temperature so we can actually dip products with it, and we can actually mold with it. If I were to take this chocolate right here right now, 
and put it into a mold, it would never, ever come out. It would just not come out. It would stick to the mold. It would slide off the pretzels. It just wouldn't be a good fit. So in order to temper this chocolate, you have to put, it's called seed chocolate. Okay. Into it. So it's a chunk of this chocolate. You can grate it. I've grated some here. You know, just keep grating. You want to put some cold chocolate into this chocolate, and you just scoop it up, basically, mix it in there. Now, so what kind of ratio is it? Um, you know, we probably have about, I would probably say 15 ounces of chocolate right here, and you could probably put about a few small chunks or a cup and a half of grated chocolate. Okay. And what you have to do is remove it from the heat so it stops heating up, obviously. Mm -hmm. You want to temper it a little bit. Just keep going until the chocolate is melted. So it's cooling down now. So then do you actually use a thermometer, or you've just probably done this enough times that well, you I, know? I but know. <laughs> but with somebody at home, maybe you should use a thermometer. Well, you would use a thermometer at home. 108 is, is what you want to heat it up to, and probably down to about 86 degrees. You can tell chocolate, when it's tempered correctly, sets up in about three minutes. Okay. It doesn't take very, very long. Like when I do my chocolate classes, um, we use pastry bags. So the participants come in and they actually fill their mold with the pastry bag and the cone and the tip of the bag, by the time I go downstairs to upstairs, is actually hardened. Oh, so wow. So it should set up fairly, fairly quickly. Okay. So we just have to wait a few more minutes before we can actually dip this, right? So we're going to pretend that this is tempered. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> because it's close to being tempered. Um, and what I want to tell people at home is you don't have to be afraid to use a high-quality chocolate. You don't need specialized equipment. You can use a pot. You can use a bowl. Have a spatula. You don't need dipping forks. Like, I have all the equipment at the store. Um, <clears throat> but when my daughter gets creative at home, yeah, you should see my kitchen. <laughs> but um, you can use forks. And anything that you can do to dip it, use a fork. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Okay, and we are going to use a fork today. So we like. are going to use a fork today. So, so just like how we do it at home. What would you like to dip first? I think I'm going to pretzel. A pretzel? That looks good. All right, so literally, this is probably the easiest thing on the face of this earth is a pretzel. You throw it in there, <laughs> you push it around with a fork, and literally you just pull it out. Sometimes forks are somewhat easier because when you have the weight of the chocolate on the product, it mm -hmm. gets pretty heavy. So you want something substantial. So we're just going to dip some pretzels. And then we'll move on to something a little harder. Yeah, move on. Now, what kind of toppings would you like on your pretzels? Uh, I like, is it Reese's Pieces over there? These are Reese's Pieces. Yep. So you can virtually put any type of toppings on any type, anything that you have in your house. You don't have to make a special trip and get cotton candy crumbles, but those happen to be my favorite. So, <laughs> um, so literally, you just put the pretzels or put the Reese's Pieces on the pretzels. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. Um, cotton candy crumbles, these are cotton candy crumbles. They're like to die for. <laughs> it's just shrunk cotton candy. I love cotton candy. I love so cotton you, candy, you too. You can do cotton candy on them. It doesn't take very much. Um, some of these over here, I have like nonpareils. Nonpareils are those little white balls and those little, they're just little tiny balls of sugar. Yeah. Well, uh, this looks great. We'll continue doing this in just a minute, but um, for now, we're going to send it to break. When we come back, Amelia will have a look at today's forecast and we'll dip some more chocolate. Yep. All right. All right, in our second helping, Gail is going to tell us how to make that magic hard shell. And you say it's really, actually, really easy. It is so easy. Don't go buy, don't go buy it at the store because it's all chemicals. You want to make your own magic hard shell. You take your chocolate, okay? So any type of chocolate. Once again, high quality chocolate with cocoa butter as one of the first, prime, first or second primary ingredient. Take about seven ounces of melted chocolate does not have to be tempered down. So you can just melt this in the microwave, you can melt it on your stove, however you want to do it. And you add about two tablespoons, this is the key, of cocoa, cocoa oil. So it's coconut butter oil. You can get that at Wegmans, you can get that at Tops. And what that does, it emulsifies the chocolate. And the chocolate, you're going to have to take it when it's liquid and put it into a something you can squeeze out and then you can pop back in the microwave. But when you put that warm chocolate onto your ice cream, it immediately forms a hard shell. 
So you will put it in the microwave. Um. Yeah, because it's going to eventually harden. Mm -hmm. Like, but so you need to put it in a squeeze tube of some sort so that you can pop it in the microwave. Okay, and how long will that last for? Oh, that'll last forever. You know, chocolate has a shelf life of six months. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I would have thought longer. It's six months. Six months is a good round thing. I don't keep it that long because it sells so quick. Yeah. But um, if it's filled with creams and stuff like that, then obviously it goes a little quicker. But, um, yeah, so you would be able to keep that in your cover for six months. No problem. Well, Amelia's eyeing the chocolate. Yeah, I'm just going to run right in here. This looks absolutely